So, I wanted to do a video where I talked about all the cards from the new set that's coming out. All the cards. They've released uh, all the cards that they haven't shown on their Twitter and whatnot, they have now released. I did that and realized I didn't hit record. So now my voice is kind of dead. Whatever. So, so we're going to try this again. Uh, however, I'm going to just put into two videos at this point as my voice is going to kill me if I don't. Uh, so in this, we're going to be talking about all of the Bilgewater cards. A lot of these we've already seen, obviously. Uh, but we're going to be talking about all of the Bilgewater cards. Um, so we're first going to start with the champion cards. Some of these, are, these we've all seen already, so I'm going to be going over them again, just for people that haven't. I'm going to be going over every single Bilgewater card there is. Okay, and I will be, with cards that we've already seen before, I'm going to run through very fast. Fizz, uh, when you cast a spell, give me elusive and stop all enemy spells and skills from targeting me. When you cast six spells this game, I level. Um... I think this is actually going to be really good. Uh, and when you level him, he uh, gets uh, same effect, but Nexus Strike uh, created from the waters. Um, I think this is going to be really good. Um, actually, I can jump around here into some of the followers and spells that work well with uh, Fizz. Um, so essentially, anything with a tune is really good with Fizz. It creates spell cards in your... It creates spells for you to, to be able to play. Um, and yeah... This is Shum the Water is a four cost spell that is slow that gives somebody that gives an enemy vulnerable and creates a long tooth, which is a five one card. A five attack, one health card. With overwhelm, which the health stat doesn't matter because you can create as many of them as you want in theory with leveled up Fizz. Uh, and Fizz is not to see you cast the spells to level up, which is important to note. Uh, but yeah, anything with a tune is really good. Outside of maybe Bubble Bear, I do not think Bubble Bear is a good card. Um, a 6 health, 0 attack, elusive card. Uh, yeah, 306 card with elusive and a tune I don't think is good. Uh, but there are, um, let me go to a tune. These are all the attune cards in the game. Uh, or at least in Bilgewater. Uh, Coral Creatures, I think you're gonna have to probably run this in a Fizz deck, I think. However, I think you need to be very careful about what um, region you combine Fizz with, as Coral Creatures is going to... Essentially, essentially whatever one-cost spells there are in the game, from the re whatever one-cost spells in the regions that you're playing with, there are, Coral Creatures is going to grab from those. So if you play Coral Creatures in a region with a region that doesn't have great one cost spells then it there's no reason to be playing coral creatures you have to be very careful about what region you combine fizz with if you're going to run coral creatures which i think you should um then there's shell shocker which is a one two one with a tune a uh, great card for fizz slippery wave rider which is a five four four with elusive and a tune I think this is great as well for Fizz. I think if you were using this in a different deck other than the Fizz deck, then this would not be good. But uh, since you are using this with the Fizz deck, I think it's great. And there's uh, Zap Spray Fin. Uh, he's a 4 2 2 with Elusive, with a Tune. When I'm summoned, draw a spell that costs 3 or less from your deck. I think that's amazing. You get more spells and whatnot. Um, I think you need another way to. You need some way to, like, essentially, Fizz looks like this, like, annoying uh, aggro mid-range type of deck. Like, more so, most are, like, it's, it's more so aggro in the sense that I'm elusive. You can't touch me. If you try to kill me, I'm going to do, play a spell card to make it so that you don't actually get to kill me. The counter to Fizz is just play challenger cards. Um, but, yeah. Um... And then for like some like there's not a lot of like spells that work directly with Fizz outside of Mind Meld. Um, Mind Meld. Uh, this round starts at all allies' power and health to the number of spells you've played this game. This is an eight cost card, and it is meant to be your game ender with the Fizz deck. Uh, 
Um... Granted, you should, like, there should be another way to end the game. Like, you should you should definitely have another way to end the game. Like, this is, at best, a one-off in the Fizz deck. Um, this is not something you play on turn 5, um, because you don't, you, you, have, you there's, like, no, there's, there's almost no way you've played enough spells yet. I say almost, because you may have, because of all the attunes. But there's almost no way you've played enough spells yet. Um... I think I think this is good. Uh it can be denied, which is a little unfortunate. And you all like you are all inning uh with this. Uh but a lot of you could okay, so if you use bubble bear, Mind Meld can make it so that bubble bear is actually useful. Because anything with elusive appreciates mind meld. So and then there's also Playful Shrikster, which is also Fizz as a spell as well. Uh, four costs, remove an attacking ally from combat to rally. I don't know how good this is. Um, essentially, you can use this to get around challenger units. That's how I can see it maybe being used. Or to save one of your units so that way you can attack in. Um... It's meant to be a rally effect, so it's meant it's realistically meant to be aggro, uh, and to save one of your units, so then you can attack again. It is it is meant to be aggro as all hell. The fizz deck, I think. Like it's not meant to be like aggro to the face like um some of the other decks are where, you know, it's like I I play Legion rear guard with uh the Legion Saboteur and like I just play a bunch of these low cost units that just deal a ton of damage to you if you don't like, take them out fast enough, which you might not, depending upon what deck you're running. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, yeah, we'll see how the Fizz deck goes. Okay. Uh, next up, we'll be looking at GP and Misfortune. Uh, they work really well together. GP, when I'm summoned, summon a powder keg, uh, which we'll get to in a second. When uh, you've damaged the enemy nexus in five rounds this game, um, I level. Uh, GP also has overwhelm. His stat line is pretty good. And misfortune, uh, 3 3 3. Uh, when allies attack, deal one damage to enemies in the enemy nexus. When I've seen you attack four times, I level. Um, so, misfortune likes. Rally effects in theory, uh, and GP likes hitting the Nexus. Uh, essentially, he likes under synergy because that's essentially what you want to do when you hit the Nexus. Uh, but there's a lot of different ways that he can hit the Nexus. His wording here is not well put. Um, it is very ambiguous as to. When you've damaged the enemy nexus in five rounds this game. It's it's just not it's not clear because Sejuani's thing says when you've damaged the enemy nexus in different rounds. So that means that since it doesn't have that keyword effect, that means if I damage like if what if I damage the enemy nexus in one round five different times? Okay? Does if I'm attacking does each separate uh, attack for my units count as a separate damage source? Uh, count as like a separate way of me damaging the enemy nexus? I don't know. Not well said. So. Yeah, they need to. It needs to be more clear. Um, but okay, so these two work well together, obviously. Fortune also has ways to damage the enemy nexus. Now, Powder Keg, we go to Followers, Powder Keg, um, they stack onto each other, so you can have multiple of them, all your spells and skills deal one additional damage, so if you've got like two Powder Kegs, all your spells and skills are going to deal two additional damage, but you destroy me when you do that spell, it's going to so Powder Keg can work with Misfortune, um, it can also work with uh, GP as well, Misfortune has, uh, Misfortune's leveled, leveled up Misfortune, uh, when allies attack, deal one damage three times to battling enemies and the enemy nexus. So Powder Keg will stack with that. Uh, and she also gets overwhelmed when she levels. And GP, when he levels, at round start, summon another Powder Keg. Um, 
And when you attack, deal one damage to all enemies and enemy nexus. So these guys are just like I I'm, I'm just hitting everything at once. Just cannon barrage everywhere. Uh really interesting cards. Really interesting. Uh, and yeah. So cards that work well with these. Pretty much plunder. Plunder is what you want with them realistic. Okay. Um or just any effect that hits the Nexus. Also, there's Siren, um, Draw, Misfortune, while I'm attacking all your spells and skills deal additional damage, which is great. Um, it's also got Scout. This is a great card. Um, the Dreadway, though, is not a good card. Because it costs 9, it's not good. But it's a 9-4-8 uh, Draw Game Plank, double all damage up by allies. The effect is amazing. But, however, I would much rather have Scout over Fearsome. Thematically, Scout makes more sense for MF, I guess, and Fearsome makes more sense for GP um, because his ship is a lot more fearsome and the Siren is a lot more nimble, you know, it's smaller, so it makes sense thematically, but that doesn't change the fact that a 7-cost card with Scout that makes it all, that, all my skills deal additional damage is better than getting a 9-cost card that deals double damage because... Essentially, if you play the Dreadna Dreadway on 9, you don't get to play your GP until 10. So it's just a way to get an extra GP into your hand. So, yeah, it's like you... I'd, I'd rather have the Siren over the Dreadway. I'll put it that way. So, all the stuff that works well with... Um, them out of the cards citrus courier you can make an argument for it um it has a plunder effect once again anything with a plunder effect is good here um heal allies in your nexus uh three then rally i think that could be really good rally effects are really good for mf and gp since they have effects that activate when they when they attack and healing your allies is just nice in general only problem with citrus courier is that he costs six so you if you're gonna play him you don't want to run three of him there's Crackshot Corsair. Um, uh, it's a 1 cost, 1-1. One, one. When allies attack, deal 1 to the enemy nexus. I, this is just great. Um, once again, synergizes with like the GP level up. Um, whatnot. Uh, and synergizes with plunder effects. Uh, Dreadway Deckhand. Uh, when I'm summoning, summon a Powder Keg. Anything that's summon Powder Kegs is great. Um... There's Island Navigator, which is a scout card. I don't know if you're going to want to use this. I don't see people using this. Um, but, like, it helps proc MF's level up condition. Um, also, I think my thing is going off the screen. I think of how I have it cropped. I can't tell if it's going off the screen or not. Whatever. Island Navigator. When I'm summoning, create a random one cost unit from any faction, Granite Scout. It just. Hmm. You get two scouts. Um, so, like, in theory, this island navigator is, like, in theory, it is a 4-6 spread across two units, and they both have scout. In that regard, it is good, but do you have room for it in your pirate deck? I don't know. Uh, Jagged Butcher, uh, 1 cost 2-2. Two, two. Grant me plus 1 plus 1. Uh, this is just a good card, in general. You're probably gonna want to run it. In. You're like you're, you might just want to run this in a lot of built water decks. Um, let's see. Uh, then there's Monkey Idol. I'm not a big fan of this card. Uh, so it costs three. Uh, it can't attack or block. Round start. Deal two damage to me and summon a Powder Monkey. Powder Monkey is an ephemeral card with last breath deal one damage to the enemy nexus this helps proc plunder effects that's all this card does it helps proc plunder effects your opponent it can proc plunder effect on your opponent's turn i think um because i'm pretty sure you can proc plunder on your opponent's turn um as long as you damage the enemy nexus uh so if your opponent attacks you're going to have like monkey idol is going to, you're going to be on an attack and on defense for one of each of the turns for Monkey Idol, assuming your opponent doesn't kill it. Um, so you're going to have a Powder Monkey for defense as well. So if your opponent attacks, you block a Powder Monkey. Um, 
And yeah, and then you can prop calendar effects now. So yeah, it can be pretty good. Um, I don't know. It's just it. I I just I just don't like playing this to just get two of these guys. Feels silly. Um, yeah. Petty officer. This card costs quite a bit for the stat line that it gets. Uh, but he can play a powder keg or summon a random one cost ally from any faction. Something random one cost ally from any faction is not good in a pirate deck. There is another potential deck that you can run with Bilgewater that has just a bunch of one cost allies. I'll address that near the end. Summon a powder keg though, great for pir pirate decks. A anything that has powder kegs, great for pirate decks. Uh, Plunder Poro. I'll, I'll mention Plunder Poro here just because he's not going to be mentioned anywhere else. Um, I think he's a great addition for a Poro deck because when you plunder, uh, grant me two random keywords, which obviously is great for uh, uh, Fluff to Poros or whatever it's called, part of the Fluff, whatever. Um, outside of that, don't. The, it's a Poro. You, you you're not running this in any deck aside from a Poro deck. Crawling Cutthroat can be good with this. Um, she is an elusive uh, with fearsome. She's a one-one. Essentially, she's got an easy way of procking plunder for you. Um, outside of that, I don't think she's that strong. Um, and it's like, do you want to take the time to use her to proc it? I I don't I don't think so. Riptide Rex. This is a interesting card. Um, plunder can barrage seven times on random enemies. And what plunder is, or what cannon barrage is, I should say, here we go, uh, deal two to a unit, if it's dead or gone, deal one to the enemy nexus instead. So essentially we're hitting seven random units for two, and then... And then if they're dead, we um, deal one to the Nexus. So, like, in theory, we can do up to seven damage to the Nexus. This card costs eight. I think, at best, you can run a one-off of it if you want to. But it's essentially trying to board wipe and end the game for you. I don't think you need this. I think this is a overkill because MF and GP already hit, like, everything on the board. So I think this is overkill. I don't think you need this card. I don't think you want to run this card. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's pretty much it. You can run Yodel Grifter. He's the Allegiance card. Uh, when I'm summoned, create a Warning Shot in hand, which I'll show in a second, and then Allegiance, draw one from the enemy deck. Question is, do you want to run a mono Bilgewater deck with pirates? Can you, get it, can you even get away with that? I don't know. Um... But I don't think I think Yordle Grifter works better in a draw deck, uh, which we'll get to. Then for spells, um, Parlay uh, is also there's Parlay and then there's GP's Parlay, which is you know, the spell version of GP. Uh, deal one to anything. If, if this kills it, deal one to the enemy Nexus. Parlay is good because when you combine it with Powder Keg, yeah, you can deal damage to Nexus, which means you can block Prunder. Um, more powder. Summon two powder kicks. I don't see this being exactly useful. There's a lot of other creatures in the deck that summon powder kicks for you, so I don't see this being useful. Uh, double up. Uh, this card costs six, so it's already not good. But uh, deal two to an enemy. If this kills it, deal four to the enemy nexus. The fact that you can deal four to the enemy nexus is great because this will, once again, uh, stack with powder kegs, so you can deal quite a substantial amount of powder kegs on the board. But the problem is, is that this card costs 6. So, I don't really think you should use this. Uh, make it rain, and then Misfortune is make it rain. Um, deal 1 to 3 different random enemies. Uh, once again, stacks of Powder Keg, so can be pretty useful. Um, it just hits a lot of different enemies. You'll notice that they're, the Misfortune and GP effects are just hit everything. Um, so yeah. You know, can be useful. Uh, technically, one can consider a scrap shot a pirate card, uh, but it's a bad card. Don't run scrap shot. Toss three, deal seven to a unit. Terrible card. First off, in a pirate deck, you don't care to toss. Um, second off, paying seven to deal seven is not good. 
Healing 7 damage is overkill. It is overkill. It's only going to be useful on certain against certain enemies. But like the problem is is that let's use the problem is is that a lot of enemies that you're going to use this on are going to cost less than 7. So there's no point like you're you're wasting you're spending more mana to kill their card. It's just it's just not good. This is not a good card. There are better ways around stuff. Like in in theory, you could be like, I want to run a one off of scrap shot, so that way I can deal with like really big tanky cards. Sure, you can do that because if like you run into like a tough unit, it might be hard to take out. But man, does that suck! Oh, so warning shot here. Uh, deal one damage to the nexus. Cost zero. Prox plunder effects. But I don't know if you want this as an actual card in your deck because it takes up a spot in your deck. So I don't think it's good. Uh, other plunder cards, there are strong arm. Place a follower in play into your hand. This can work like a Will of Ionia, except it goes into your hand. Um, as a, and then it also only works on followers. I don't see this being useful. Um, it's just too specific. Um, it's like, I don't know, I just, I don't, I don't see it being useful. I really don't. Uh, let's see, was there anything else on the spells? No. Okay, next champion list we have Nautilus, uh, which has the deep uh, tag, which uh, deep means that you have 15, um, second. deep means that if you have 15 or less cards in your deck, uh, you activate deep, uh, and it gives you plus three plus um for any unit that has the keyword deep not Nautilus doesn't have the keyword deep i should say Nautilus levels when you go deep um so deep is essentially you want to toss cards for deep. um and there are quite a bit of toss energy cards in the game now you can also deck out for deep uh you can try to just draw a bunch but that's not as good because Nautilus wants you to be tossing cards so, uh, when I level up copy tossed allies uh, that cost 4 plus into your deck. So all your allies that cost 4 or more go back into your deck. And sea monsters cost 4 less when he's leveled. Also, you can see Nalus, uh 0 attack when he's not leveled. 13 attack when he is leveled. He's a big boy. He's a late game card. So, what are some sea monsters that we've got here? Uh... Okay, I'll have to go through it manually, because Sea Monster is not an actual attack. Okay, uh, Abyssal Eye, uh, 5 costs, 3-3, uh, three, three, uh, with Elusive and Deep. Outside of a Nautilus deck, don't run this card. This is... Pfft. Like, te technically, okay, technically, there, are, there is a spell card. There is a spell card called Lure of the Depths, which you're probably going to want to run. Uh, reduce the cost of Sea Monsters, ally, sea monster allies everywhere by 1. They're all a Sea Monster. That's really good. It is really good. It's a three cost burst spell that you're probably going to want to end up using. Um, but like, okay, so for like this, Nexus Strike, draw a card. That's really good late game. Uh, because this, like, when you're, when, you're, when you're in deep, when Nas is leveled up, this card is costing one. Assuming you haven't played your other thing to make it cost less. Um, and assuming Nautilus is out as well. But it's elusive, it'll be a 6-6. Six, six. Um, so it'll be very difficult. Like, it, it's going to do damage late game. Before you hit deep, this is not a good card. Um, yeah, that, that's just all there is to say. A 5 cost 3-3 three, three of elusive. Yeah, this is not a good card. Uh, until you hit deep. Devour the Death. Super strong card if you're in deep. A lot of the sea monsters are just strong if you're in deep. Uh, obliterate an enemy with less health than me. Obliterate meaning remove from the game. They are not killed. They cannot be revived. Last Wrath effects do not go off. They are obliterated. 
any, uh, he can choose any enemy that has less health than him. So, like, you can obliterate an opponent's champion, and they cannot rekindler it. Um, great card. Once again, though, if you are not in deep, or if you do not have not a leveled up Nautilus out, this is terrible. Um, oh, you know what I was thinking? I don't know if using Lore of the Seas makes it so that your sea monster card that would cost three. So, for instance, there's a um, there's the beast below. It costs four. It's a four 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 sea monster card that would be pretty simple. If you use Lure of the Sea or whatever, that makes it that would make it cost three. Would Nautilus's effect bring it back? I would imagine not, because it, no matter where it is, it costs three. So that's interesting. Something to remember. Um, let's see other sea monster cards. Um, oh, I forgot. This is a card that might be good for uh, MF. Another scout card. Grand an ally vulnerable. Uh, something that might be good for MF. Back to not all this stuff. My bad. Uh, shipwreck quarter. When I'm summoned, toss two, shuffle two treasures into your deck. This is the best sea monster there ever was, um, because it gives you treasure cards. Desert cards are really strong because one of them summons three of vicious plate worms. Remember what this guy is. He's a five. He don't don't care about his his summoning cost because this is a token. He is a five attack, five health, fearsome D. Okay, because we're going to go to spells, and this is where your treasure cards are. There's uh, three treasure cards, four treasure cards, three or four treasure cards. Can't remember exactly, but treasure. Uh, we're gonna actually gonna start plate worm next because it summons three vicious plate worms. Three of those guys from before. So you get three five fives, and if you're in deep, you get three eight eights. That's insane. That's insane. Treasure trove. If I'm uh, also all the treasure cards, if you toss them, you get to draw them instead. So you never have to worry about tossing treasures. Uh create five random cards in hand. They cost zero and are fleeting. Amazing card. Amazing. Uh keel breaker. If I'm tossed, draw me instead. Deal five into all units. This is the worst of the treasure cards you're dealing damage to your own units and if you are not in deep you will kill your own sea monsters um so yeah that's not good so outside of that let's look at some toss energy that's in build order there is toss energy within other things uh but i'm only looking at build order today because it or in this video i will have a second video out at the same time this goes up as well um but i'm only going to look at build order stuff for now uh, there is Salvage, Toss 2, Draw 2. Great card. Which is a great card in general for anything, really. Um, but it costs 4, so I think some people are overrating this card. It's like, oh, you can draw 2 cards, eh, but, it, but, you, but it costs 4. It's, it's expensive to play this. So, uh, gives you Toss energy. Uh, Jettison, Toss 4. I think this is better than what a lot of people are giving it credit for. Um, I I think it's good. I think I think it's a good card, in my opinion. If you're playing it with Nautilus, and then uh, there's Riptide, which uh, and then Nautilus is Riptide. Stun an enemy, shovel that unit into the enemy deck. If there's an ally Nautilus, this is essentially like a hyped up Will of Ionia. Um, if you have Nautilus on the board, the enemy is going back into their deck. Uh, yeah, is. I mean, there's obviously ways around it. Obviously, you can, like, the enemy can Will of Ionia your Nautilus or Vengeance your Nautilus when you play this. But, uh, yeah. If tank is good. And there's nothing really else. Um, I don't really think there's any other followers that work well. And here. So, uh, last champion on the list is going to be Twisted Fate. And then after TF, I'll go over all the other things that are in Bilgewater. Uh, TF is a 4-2-2 quick attack. Play a Destiny card. TF is very special because he is the most flexible champion. Uh, he gets to play any one of these three Destiny cards of your choosing. Blue card. Refill your spell mana by one. Draw a card. Amazing, because TF's uh, level up condition is draw eight cards. Or you have to see him draw it. He has to see you draw eight cards. So that's really good for his level up condition. He also has gold card. Deal two, damn, deal two and stun the strongest enemy. That's great if you want to uh, slow down the pace of the game. 
your opponent's got a really scary card out. Yeah. Then red card. Deal one damage to all enemies and the enemy nexus. Great against spiders. The TF is just really strong because you can just hold on to TF if you want. If you're going up against a spider that can be like, yeah, if you want to play your spiders, go ahead. But I have my TF in my hand ready to go. And the enemy has to respect that. Um, yeah. Uh, and when TF, when you, so you draw eight cards is his level of condition. He has to see you draw eight cards. Which can be a little bit difficult. Um, unless you go through like a pure draw deck. So like having TF just as like a card you throw into your deck. Probably not what you're going to want to end up doing. Um, unless you just don't have anything better to do. Like if you just throw them into your deck you're not leveling them up. Um, you have to actually build a deck around his level up condition to level him up. Uh, but the first time I see you play a card each round, I play a Destiny card. So he's going to be playing his cards uh, for the first three times you play a card. Which is amazing. Also, TF has Quick Attack. His stat line for that is kind of bad. As in really bad. But he's such a good card otherwise. So, essentially you want a lot of draw synergy with him. So let's look at what we have and use that. Black Market Merchant. When you draw an enemy card, reduce its cost by one, and if you plunder, draw one from the enemy deck. Uh, this can, in theory, be used in just any deck that benefits from plunder effects. Or can, I should say, can proc plunder effects easily. But, uh, works obviously really well with TF because you're drawing cards. Just any anything that draws cards is amazing with TF. Anything. Um... Yeah, so from the Black Market Merchant, we're going to go down to the Yodel Grifter, um, because this is the Allegiance card. I highlighted it a little bit earlier. When I'm summoning, create a Warning Star in the hand. That's good for TF's level up condition. Uh, and it is good for activating plunder effects for your uh, your uh some of your other cards, because TF will have some plunder cards in his deck, um, just because Bilgewater has a lot of plunder cards. Uh, Allegiance, draw one from the enemy deck. That's like amazing with this card, with Black Market Merchant. That is so good. So that's great. Um, there's Brass Gambo. To play me, discard two, uh, and when you attack, draw two fleeting. Eh. Eh. I don't really like this card. Uh, even, even when its synergy is useful, I don't like it. I don't think I'm going to run this in the TF deck. Unless, maybe, maybe as a two of. I don't know. It, it it just doesn't feel great for me to discard cards unless I'm discarding fleeting cards, and that's different. Um, oh, I forgot Dreg Dreggers for Nautilus. Uh, toss three. Yeah, he's he's pretty decent. Let's see what else was there. Oh, I forgot Jaw Hunters, which when I'm summoning, create a random sea monster in hand. That's also a pretty good card for Nautilus. Uh let's see what else was there. Oh, Pool Shark, right. When I summon, draw one fleeting next round. That's a great card for uh, TF. Um, it's a good card in general, but yeah. Uh, the Smooth Soloist. So the Smooth Soloist is not a good card until you get a lot of draw synergy in your deck. Um, smooth Soloist. Reduce the cost of allies in your hand and deck by two. Uh, it, you have to plunder to activate its effect, and it does cost seven. But if you can keep drawing a lot of cards, it is really, really good. Um, for like late game purposes, for ending out a game. So yeah. And then there is Slotbot. Slotbot. Um, round start. Grant me plus one, plus zero, plus one for each card you drew last round. Then shuffle my stats. Uh, obviously this clearly works with draw synergy. Even if you just... Even if you only drew one card just from your base draw on the previous turn, you get plus one, and then he becomes like a 2-2 two, two card maybe, which obviously isn't that great for a 3-plus card. Um, but notice how it doesn't say for the round. These stats that he gets stays forever. Um, so, plot bot, really good if your opponent doesn't uh, take care of it. Um, and just really good with draw synergy. There is a chance that you end up with 1 HP on slot bot and then you feel bad. Uh but yeah. Outside of that, uh <laughs> he's in my opinion, I think he's a very 
funny card to use uh, because it can make for some interesting uh, plays if you can get slot bot really high. Um, and then obviously you can whammy. Hit, uh, hit bankrupts essentially. Alright, so TS special card is pick a card. Um, you shuffle a card from your hand into your deck to draw three fleeting at next round start. This, uh, a lot of people have been saying that this is not great, uh, but in a TF deck, this is amazing. Um, just anything would draw a synergy. Amazing. There is Sleight of Hand. Draw a random non-enemy champion from the enemy hand. You do have to plunder to use this, uh, but it is considered drawing a card. Um, and I, let me check real quick. Um, black market merchant effect. The black market merchant effect activates when you draw an enemy card. It does not have to be from the enemy deck. The black market merchant will make this uh, card that you draw one less. Um, so yeah, sleight of hand, pretty good. Um, yeah, what else was there? Oh, there's a uh, pilfered goods. Draw a card from the enemy deck. Thunder, draw one more. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, Pocket Aces. This is the one card that I'm not really keen on. Clearly, it's a TF card. But when drawn, costs one less this round. So, okay, when you draw it, it can cost two for the round. Which, if you're drawing a lot of cards, that might be useful. Uh, Grant an ally plus two, plus one. This is a card that you want to use to buff up your TF. Um, because the buff is permanent. Um... It's kind of like a standalone. It is kind of like a standalone. It is a burst card, so you can catch somebody off guard with it. Um, don't need to have... Obviously, it's not like standalone where you need to have just one unit out on the board. So uh, I think I think Pocket Aces, I think you want to run it, but I don't think you need it as a three. I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of draw synergy, so it, making a TF related deck is going to be difficult. It is going to be very difficult to make a TF. Um, I think there's there's going to end up being a fine line of how much draw power you need. Um, then for the last draw power card, we have Ye Be Warned. Um, the slow spell, give an enemy vulnerable uh, this round. If it dies, you draw a card. Um, I don't really think you need this unless you really want the vulnerable tagline on an enemy. There's a lot of other drawing cards in the game already, so, yeah. I don't know if you really need this, um, unless you really, really, really want vulnerable. Uh, which you might. Uh, it's just like, the, the question is going to be, with all this draw power TF wants, what else are you putting with him? Um, and like, for instance, if you want the Yordle Grifter's Allegiance effect, where you draw an edit, where you draw a card from the enemy's deck, you need to only be well. You need to pretty much be Bilgewater, on a Bilgewater. So like at best, you know, realistically, you're only using three cards of somewhere something else, and that might just end up being you're using Will of Ionia. Um, you know, because that's the most popular card there is. Uh, to then maybe maybe did not. You know. So yeah. Okay, let's look at some other cards that don't really fit into any one particular deck. Um. So going down the list here, um, we have Golden Narwhal. Which is not a card that you should be running, unless you really want an elusive unit, but I don't think you should be running Golden Narwhal. Uh, it's a 3, 2, 4 with elusive and vulnerable. Why you would want your own unit to have vulnerable, I don't know. I don't think it's good. Uh, then there's Haunting Fleet. It costs 5, it's a 7-7, seven, seven, which is great stats, although kind of overkill. Um, when I'm summoned, summon a Golden Narwhal for your opponent. Well, the narwhal has vulnerables, so you can immediately try to take it out. Uh, I think hunting fleet 
is useful. Uh, it's a five cost card though, so the question is, do you really want to play hunting for, uh, in your deck over a different card? I don't know. I don't think you're going to. So, yeah, it's like there's a reason why. Like, it's it's kind of similar to I'm gonna compare it to Ancient Crocolith because they have similar stats. Um, no one really plays Ancient Crocolith because it's just too difficult to. Hunting Fleet, not as difficult to play it, but it costs more. It gives your opponent a creature. Just, mm, I don't know. I don't know. People play Snow Hair though, but Snow Hair has Challenger. So, we'll see. We'll see how Hunting Fleet goes. Hired Gun. When I summon, grant the strongest enemy vulnerable. Uh, this card is useful. Uh, are you going to run it in your deck though? Not initially. You're not gonna like be like, I'm gonna run Hired Gun as like, I'm, you're not gonna like build a deck and be like, I'm putting Hired Gun in every single Bilgewater deck, you know? I think you'll put it in a couple of your decks depending upon like what you deal with from the enemy. It could be useful in a Misfortune deck because Misfortune's ability only activates on battling allies. Um, so Hired Gun could be useful in that regard because you can force an ally to battle. Or force an enemy to battle. Yeah, that's what I mean. Battling enemies. So yeah. Uh, Jagged Taskmaster. Uh, we'll get back to a second. Uh, Mystifying Magician. Uh, when you play him, transform an ally into a random 5 cost follower from any faction. It's an RNG card. That's going to be really funny if it works out well, and it's going to feel bad when it doesn't. Um, you can change like a, a one cost follower, five cost follower, that'd be great. Which actually would lead me into a good segue for the Jagged Taskmaster. Thunder, grant one cost allies everywhere, plus one plus zero. Um, you have to plunder, activate this effect. Its stat line is really good, but yeah, it has you have to be building a one cost um, which is where the other part of Petty Officer's effect comes in, where you can choose to uh, summon a one-cost ally from any faction. That works with Taskmaster. And technically, Cool Shark can work with Taskmaster, but it's not as good. And then Crawling Cutthroat can work with Taskmaster. Powder Monkey could also work with Taskmaster. That's interesting. Uh, that, that would uh, probably be... That, mm, that's actually very interesting. Cell Shocker, I don't think you want to run with Taskmaster. Uh, unless, well, uh, you could, uh, you could run a one, you could run a draw power, a draw centric deck that revolves around one cost cards. That would be interesting, but then you need to make sure that like, you're like, essentially like your one cost cards are like fodder cards at that point, but they're not fodder cards. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Double Trouble, summon two random one-cost followers from any faction. More one-cost synergy. They're, they're really trying to add more one-cost synergy. Because there's also Jailbreak, summon a random one-cost follower from any faction. Um, will these cards be good? I don't really think so. I think that more or less covers everything. Uh, let's see. Did I miss any card? Oh, I missed Sheriff uh, Lariat Rose. Uh, when I'm summoned, grant all enemies vulnerable. Uh, uh maybe as a one off, you can do this, but uh, not, not, not good. Not good. And hey, maybe maybe in the maybe in the one cost deck that that's useful. Maybe in something like an undying deck, this is pretty useful. But at the same time, you could just run like the challenger cards from Demacia, uh, to make the undying work like people are already doing. So yeah, I don't think I missed any spells here. So that is all of the bilge water. Every single one of them. And now I'm exhausted. <laughs> I still gotta review 
all the other cards. So, hope you enjoyed. Um, be looking out for the um, my other video that's going to discuss all the other cards. And yeah, thanks.